Okay, here we are guys, part three of reproduction. We're gonna talking more about the male reproductive uh, system. And today we're gonna to talk about the male accessory organs. Remember the primary organs are the gonads, which is the testes. And that's where you primarily make uh, testosterone and you also make the sperm cells. But we're gonna talk about the secondary organs. So we're gonna draw a little testy here. And on the outside of it is a thing called the epididymis. And the epididymis is the uh, area where sperm cells become mature. Now they have a little cord that goes up and around, and that cord becomes the vas deferens, or the spermatic cord, and that's gonna go up into the body and then come out through the through the uh, urethra area. So, but there's a couple places it has to go first. Now, you're gonna have, actually, as you go through this whole system, and we can't really write it here because that's below everything, um, <clears throat> you're gonna have, for example, I'm gonna do it like this. Here's the body, there's the legs, for example, there's a penis and there's scrotum and here's a testy right here. That's gonna come up like this and go down. And then you're gonna have the bladder. The bl bladder, uh, it's gonna go like this. It's gonna meet at the bladder, B for bladder, okay? And then that's gonna go out here. We have that vast deference is gonna go way up inside the body. It's quite long actually. It's a um, <clears throat> smooth muscled cord that goes from the epididymis all the way up and, and transports sperm into this area and here where you have what's called the seminal vesicles, which are two little areas off the edge of the prostate. Here's the prostate is in here, this little guy right there. There's the prostate. Prostate's just a gland. And all it does is create um, some of the fructose and some other supporting chemicals to help the sperm survive on their journey. And it also has smooth muscles so it can actually help contract and propel that sperm through the urethra. So the first part is called the seminal vesicles, uh, the ejaculatory duct, sorry. We have the ejaculatory duct, which meets from the vas deferens, which there are two of them, and it meets up with the prostate, which is there only one of them, okay? Um, next to it is the seminal vesicles that's here, and those make an alkaline fluid and some fructose and some other things to help make sure that that, that the environment that they get to is also um, neutralized, for example, because the, the internal of the female reproductive system is very acidic, and so it wants to kill everything, including sperm. It doesn't really care. But if we have this alkaline <coughs> fluid that helps support the sperm, along with the secretions of the prostate uh, <coughs> and some other glands we're going to get to, then we have like actually a improvement of the... Uh, um, uh, chances of sperm getting to where they need to go, which is gonna be the egg. Now, prostate also makes prostaglandins. That's where the word comes from. And a prostaglandin, remember, is a hormone that can cause changes where it's placed. So it can either cause smooth muscle contraction or smooth muscle relaxation. In this case, we want a smooth muscle contraction. We wanna get everything to like help those sperm get to where they need to go. The next thing, um, after this pro prostate, which should be, should be walnut size, or walnut size, I guess is about that big. And it's, uh, um, uh, pretty deep inside the body, very common to have problems with. You have BPH, which is benign prostatic hypertrophy, which can happen as the, as men get older. Uh, it can happen from irritation. It can happen from uh, urethral problems. Uh, all kinds of things can cause this benign, which means not a big deal, prostatic hyper hypertrophy, which means it swells up. Okay, um, It's a gland, so it needs to express its fluids. Like most glands do, that's how they clean themselves out. Um, <clears throat> from that point, we're going to reach uh, the next glands we get is called the bulbal urethral glands. And there are little bulbous glands right next to the urethra outside there. I mean, it's a little tiny little drawing. And the urethra, remember, is a shared tube in the male for the reproductive system and the urinary system. So it goes from the bladder. The bladder <clears throat> actually has an opening that goes through the prostate. And then you have the, the uh, uh, ejaculatory ducts, which meet up in there, right? And then that pushes all the way through. So that closes off when you're urinating so that you don't have backflow. And <clears throat> it also closes off when the system is in the reproductive mode, basically. Um, now, the urethra, uh, generally for males, can be up to like eight inches long. Remember, it goes inside the body from the outside. And it is, you know, a contractile, a smooth muscle, uh, covered in, uh, surrounded by smooth muscle. And it also has um, mucous membrane. So it's like has a, a good uh, process of, of lubrication and pH balance, for example, so that things can't get inside you as well. Now, semen itself, semen should be about 7.2 to what, 7.6 pH. Okay, that's a little bit alkaline. Um, there's about, if you look at like one, 
uh, uh, dose, I guess you would say, of semen is about 20 calories. Uh, fructose is really big in that that the mixture there, and that's so that the the Remember, they had the, the head, the acrosome, the head, and the body, and then we had the tail. The body has all those mitochondria that have to use that fructose to make energy so that it can like propel that sperm through the, uh, uh, through, the, through the system, wherever it needs to go. It's going towards the egg is where it needs to go. Okay, it has its own, it's a, a, there's, there's your own uh, antibiotic in here, in the, in, the, in the semen that actually helps. Uh, it's called seminal plasmin, and that um, kills a lot of bacteria and viruses and things like that. Now, if we're looking at uh, the cross-section, we cross cross-section of the penis, there's a couple things we need to look at and, and realize. So one, we have a dorsal vein at the top. We have a urethra, and then we have two sections here, like this, and one at the bottom. Now this is called the corpus spongiosum. This area up here is called the corpus cavernosa. There's a big artery inside here, and then there's there's little valves that will shut that off, so that when it becomes erect, the blood stays in there, okay, and it doesn't allow it to come back out. There's no muscles in there. You can um, injure. There's a the um, the tunica albin al albuginia goes around this whole thing like this, and there's a, another fibrous. Um, covering underneath the skin that helps uh, maintain its integrity and keep its strength and if that's torn when it's <clears throat> um, uh, torn when it's flaccid for example or torn at any time injured that'll contract and then it can cause a curving of one way or another I think it's called Pyrene's uh, disease or deformity or something like that so anyway that's part what three for the male reproductive system so we did spermatic cord vas deferens uh, epididymis the um, ejaculatory duct, seminal vesicles, bubble urethral glands, what the prostate really does, and um, urethra, some more facts about semen, and then a cross section of the penis. So we're gonna go on, the next one we get to do is actually we get to jump into the female uh, reproductive system. Talk to you later guys, bye.